Greetings, dear ones. I'm crying of magnetic service. And so the energy of the room is set. And what does it mean to you? And how many of you believe that you will leave the same way you came? For the one in the room who has come as a favor to a believer, and you're not. What have you made of this? If you have lifted that shield of intellectualism that you have, and let in the possibility of truth that is bigger than you see, or bigger than you've been taught, where does that leave you? Have you allowed perhaps a seed to be planted, a possibility? A possibility that the planet is in the process of recalibrating itself. Both physically, with the life in the oceans, with the consciousness and the actions of the humans around you. Or do you think all of it is a coincidence? That it does not affect you? And I will say to you yet again, dear one, that you may be a shaman and not even know it. You may have been brought here one time and you will never be brought again. This is the opening, the opportunity of possibility. It's not something to join, it's something to ponder. Could it be that the love of God is the core of you? And that you have felt it several times in your life and didn't even know what it was? Could it be that you are one who does not wish to go to this place of belief because you've been there before? And it hurt. And something happened. And everything in your cellular structure screams, don't do it again. All of those things are in the room. I know who is here. I know who listens to this message. We're going to answer some questions that have been asked, some in the room and some not that will serve both you and those who will see and read and hear this particular communications who you do not think are here now but they are now this is confusing and I've said it many times before I know who's listening I know who's reading for there is no time on my side of the veil there is only the potential, and the potential is therefore manifest in the now. It may take weeks to transcribe what you believe is happening on your clock right now, this moment. But after the transcription, and all of the editing, and the publishing, it will therefore be in writing, and someone is reading it right now. And I see you there doing it. And that sounds so odd to those of you who sit in the room. There is a reader who needs to, to see these words that I'm about to say, and I know who this is. The potential is so great that I can say it's a reality. It's already been manifested. See, you're reading, aren't you? I know you. This is the world of a multi-dimensional reality that you do not share. Therefore, I am able to give some predictions and have, not of empirical fact, but of potential. Because I know what you're thinking and what you might do. Questions are asked from the general public that I see, not necessarily from light workers or old souls. 
A week or so ago, I gave a channeling called The Six Questions. My partner, who is an engineer, recorded it. And it didn't work. This frustrates him because he knows better. He knows how to do things and it didn't work. And he was depressed because of it. Because he felt he had done a good job. Well, he didn't. <laughs> it could have been better. And yet, there were those in the audience who recorded it. And I told him we'd probably give it again. And we might. But we have no clock. And so I've instructed him that it's all right to transcribe it. And have it printed. Because the audio carries an uncertainty. And he knows what it is. For I gave him new information that he will repeat someday in a better manner and that will be recorded. The physics of the recording machine is easy to stop. <laughs> Question one for the day. This does not come from light workers who have been in a meeting like this. It's a general question from those who would walk into a meeting and see this and not understand any of the energies and they say there's unhappiness on this planet. Unhappiness begats unhappiness. People are walking around frustrated. It doesn't look like an improving planet when there's so much suffering. You talk to those who've lost their homes in this country. You talk to those who have lost perhaps relatives in a tsunami wringing their hands asking what's wrong why are we so unhappy how can this represent good news on the planet and it's such a difficult answer to give because it requires that you understand that there are now beginning to be different paradigms of reality and the paradigm of reality that you've always known, which we will call the 3D paradigm, is so shallow, it will not, absolutely not, allow for the joy that a multidimensional reality will. And this is difficult to explain. The love of God does not center itself in 3D. The love of God centers itself in a multidimensional space where the angels live. Every single master knows this. Every single human being who has seen an angel come to them knows that the energy spins through the wall. It is iridescent energy. There's no skin and wings and halo. And it's frightening to a three-dimensional human being to see a multidimensional form and they fall on their knees. And whether it was Muhammad in the cave or Moses in the burning bush, these angelic properties are not in 3D. And neither is the divinity of you. You want happiness, human being, you better find the multidimensional God inside. The paradigm is shifting. My partner says it's quantum. It's not quantum. It's multidimensional. You've got to start moving from that paradigm which restricts everything you do to a reality of sameness and singularity to one that opens the potentials of change for everything. Change in who you are, how you react to things. Who you think you are, who you were born to be. All of it rewritable into a paradigm that is multidimensional and includes the love of God and the joy of the moment. 
What am I saying to you? I am saying that you're going to remain unhappy, dear one, whoever you are reading this and hearing this. There is no hope unless you decide to turn inward and find that which is divine, which is multidimensional, and start the process we've talked about. Otherwise, you simply wallow in the drama. And you might say, well, I've tried. Trying is not doing. And you know that. There is more to the puzzle than you have experienced. If you are one who says this, you've got to experience this joy and throw away all of the things that you think irritate you. Throw away all of the things you think you are in order to capture that which is grander and bigger than you ever thought could be. That is who the human being is and I I've got back up on this. <laughs> For the masters of the planet faced off with you, all of them, and they named it. They showed it to you. They toyed with physics and life. They even raised the dead. And they would turn to you and say, this is what God does. And you are God. They told you you could move mountains. And you can. We've talked about the change of consciousness changing a planet from one which always warred with itself to one will eventually be at peace with itself and you think that's going to happen easily and overnight. This is the first year You've got 18 years to plant the seeds and two more generations to watch it work. This is how humanity works. It's slow. And you're impatient. That's why there's so much unhappiness at the moment. Impatience, misunderstanding, wanting instant gratification, thinking you're doing something and tapping your toe while you think God helps you. And then when it doesn't happen tomorrow, saying, well, I knew it wouldn't. Hmm? You tell me, is that commitment or is that trying? Hmm. Is this too strong for you? To say that you are beautiful inside and it's about time you found it. It's about time you found it. And when you find it, you settle down. You don't get as angry, you don't get as depressed, you don't react. And then people around you see you in that state and they go, you know, you're different. You're not as angry. You don't react. <laughs> what have you got? I want it. And that's how it begins. You shine a light and others see it and they want theirs because it is beautiful. It is satisfying. And we tell you again, when you walk with the masters, any of them, how did you feel? Did they look at you and annihilate you? Did they say bad things to you? And the answer is no. They looked at you, they looked through you, they love you, and you were speechless. Some of you were there. Hmm? And you remember, all you want to do is be in their presence. It's almost like they got a field around them, and if you can be close to them, you'll get it too. This is the love of God in a human being that emanates divinity. You're planting the seeds of ascension. That was question number one. Question number two, what happens when you die? This is so complicated. <laughs> but I'm going to divide it into two parts. Both are spiritual parts. The death of the human being, which all of you in the room, are you ready for this, have experienced all of you, there is not one newbie here. <laughs> I want you to go inside for a moment. Don't you feel it? You know how things work. Get outside of your own problems and look at the planet. You know how things work. You feel it. You've been here before. It's not a mystery. This morning I asked you, to examine death with me and I told you I would tell you more about it you know when you die it's not the end it's intuitive because you've gone through it 
It hides, by the way, just under the surface. You're not really quite sure. But your intuition tells you it's so. There is no sting in death. Not for you. But for the ones around you, yes. So the first thing I want to tell you about death is that those around you will suffer. And sometimes that is appropriate for it brings them to their knees, especially when you go too soon. And sometimes because of that they find that which is inside, the only solace they'll have, which is spiritual, and your death is the catalyst for their enlightenment. Do you understand the process? What happens when you die physically? It's easy. You return to the dust of the planet. What more do you want to know? Corporeal? Easy. That's just part of the Gaia process. But let me tell you about the moment of transition. You lose three ounces of something that no one knows about. The three ounces. The communication which is quantum, everything that ever was of you, it doesn't go up, it goes down. <laughs> it goes to the cave of creation, we've told you this before, it goes to the crystalline grid, some of it even goes to the cetaceans of the earth. There is a system here that allows it to remember your life. It's stored in the planet. Your spirit comes home, but not your Akashic record. It stays on the planet because the planet owns it. You have changed the planet by what you've done. You're not taking it with you. And you come home. And we have a party. I've told you that before. And we do. Oh, there is no, there's no sting in death. Not yours. Not your own. And you know it right away. Within three days, you're fully aware. You're a piece of God. You remember. You hear the music again. You hear the music again. Oh, you don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> you will and then you come back and when you do and when that is and sometimes it's faster than you've ever been told by any psychic where things are speeding up you often are you ready for this you often come back born into your own family <laughs> as grandchildren in your same karmic group that's a process of the light worker so that your grandparents can teach you things that only they can teach you and when you take your first breath you pick up something you pick up all of the soul energy from the cave of creation and the crystalline grid that you stored there when you left that is called Akashic inheritance the artists become artists. The policemen become policemen. <laughs> it's in your genes. It's in your DNA. Who you used to be. The proclivities for the things you want and don't like. Food choices. Question was asked once, should I be a vegetarian? What is correct for my body spiritually? I will tell you what is correct for your body spiritually. The thing that makes sense to you. <laughs> If you spent lifetimes in Tibet or India, you're probably craving different foods than that which is in the United States. And that's how it works, dear one. Your body reacts to what it remembers. And if that serves you by not eating meat, then that is what you should do for your health. Do not project it on your friends. For they have their own akash. They have their own system that works for them. Human beings like to compartmentalize everything and therefore what you find is good you want everybody to do or else. <laughs> That's called mainstream religion. <laughs> do not criticize the ones who have found God and found joy in a system that works for them because they are tuned to it. Perhaps they were the very disciples of Christ. They're tuned to it. And they want for everyone what works for them. And this is appropriate and it's good. And much of it has integrity. Do you understand? It may not be for you. 
but they do tend to put themselves in a box and everyone climbs into theirs. This is starting to change. What happens at death? A system, beauty, honor, and you turn into the peace of God that you know that you are. And when Elijah ascended, you got to see it written by Elisha. Turned to the light, so bright couldn't even look at, split into parts. Elisha saw the Merkava, the field around the human being, the chariot that, that, that Elijah rode in. He saw it. He reported it. And what do you think about it? The human got to see ascension. That's death. Question three, is there life on other planets? Are you kidding? <laughs> There's life everywhere, everywhere. Scientists are searching for microbial life on all the planets and their moons in your solar system and they will eventually find it. And they will know that the seeds of life is everywhere. Then they'll project that. How much life might there be? How long has it been? And then something will occur to them. And I will call it the total illogicness, if you want to use that word, <laughs> of their own human history. How old do you think the universe is? All right, yours. How old is your universe? And your scientists, well, we've got about 13 billion. That's Okay, you can, let's use their numbers. And your own planet, all four, five, maybe. How old is humanity? Why weren't you here with the dinosaurs? You think the earth wasn't ready? Do you think that um, perhaps that, that that which controls evolution was a little too stupid to make a human, but they could make a dinosaur? Have you ever thought about these things? If you put the Earth's entire history and made it a 24-hour clock, life itself only started in the last hour and humanity, all of civilization, happened the last few seconds. Isn't that odd to you? Therefore, in a universe that may be 13 billion years old, you arrived in the last few seconds. Did you ever think maybe you're the newest ones on the block? <laughs> and if you had that thought, you'd be right. And let me tell you that if the universe is that old, do you think perhaps there are civilizations in your galaxy that might be a billion or more years older than you? And if there are, do you think perhaps they have gone through anything you're going through? And if that is the case, do you think any of them have gone into a quantum ascension status? And I will tell you, there are dozens. I can give you some of their names, but I'm not going to because you already know and you've listed them. And the ones who directly seated you are called Pleiadian. And the ones who seated them may even be Octorian. And the ones that seated them may be even Orion. They're everywhere. And they're all here as well. They're looking at you for you are the ones who are next. And you are passing this marker. Oh, dear ones, it's going to be a long time. The first step is peace on earth. The next is that evolution which is going to increase your DNA propensity for 100 percent and you're going to live a long time and every time I say that there are human beings in their intellectual mind saying well there is a geometric uh, birth rate going on we're not going to make it because we're going to overcrowd and we can, we'll have food and so what you're saying crying is if we live longer it's not going to be a good thing we're all going to be suffering and I will tell you, if that is your thought, human being, you are assuming human beings are stupid and haven't figured out what's going on and why there is so much birth.
And they can't control it because they haven't figured it out. <laughs> I want to tell you, you're going to see something. You're going to see a decline in birth rate because humans are smart. And they're getting smarter. And they're going to see the quality of life and they're going to figure out how many children they should have. Not how many their church says they should have. You're going to see it sooner than not. The beginning of wisdom on the planet in so many areas that no sociologist has ever given you credit for. So it's going to surprise them all. And it's going to happen without a government program. It's going to happen because you decide you want it and it's going to happen collectively. And there's a lot of things like this. Is there life on other planets? Way before you. In your galaxy. Your scientists are saying, it's going to be a long time before we get to the stars, you know. You have to get this little tin can and put air in it and then stay in it for several years, you know, before you're going to get to the next star. <laughs> Meanwhile, a Pleiadian can do it in the blink of an eye. What do you think is going on there? And I will tell you, as long as you stay in 3D, you'll still be getting in little tin cans and suits putting air in them and going to planets. As soon as you become quantum, you will simply wish yourself there because you will be entangled with everything and can go with intent. And if you don't believe this, I will tell you, human being, you will. For what I give you is true. You will, for it will be a time that you as a human being right now will be part of. It may be lifetimes and lifetimes from now, but the group that is before me is the group that is going to come back over and over and over. The difference is you're you're done coming back in an old energy. This is a new energy. When you come back, dear one, everything you know will, will be in your DNA and be on top. You're not going to have to go through what you did before. As soon as you decide to look around and open the door, everything you've learned this time around will be right there. I want to tell you this is the attribute of what you would call the child of new consciousness, which you have labeled with a color, indigo. The child remembers who they are. They remember so much, they are conceptual. And you believe they have to be taught from scratch. Do you understand what is taking place? We told you this last time. We want you to examine, I'm going to review something with you. The animal on the, on the prairie drops its calf. And within hours, the calf is up running with the herd. Did you know that the calf instantly knows who its enemies are? What water to drink that doesn't smell right? What berries to eat that are poison? Where did that come from? That was inherited. And when you have a baby, nothing. <laughs> nothing. Doesn't know anything. 20 years of teaching. Aren't you tired of that? <laughs> Did you ever think about why the animals have so much and you have so little? <laughs> it's time for that to change. You're starting to see it even with the indigos. They come in knowing. That's why they're so impatient. You're trying to teach them things they already know instinctively. Just like the calf on the prairie. They come out knowing. Some of them try to teach you. That doesn't always go well. That was question three. Question four. What about all these conspiracies on the planet? All manner of things you've heard about now for decades. I'm not going to name them. I'm going to let you name them in your mind. What humans are doing to humans, what governments are doing to humans, the poison that's coming here and there, the, the mind training, the, the, the control, the governmental secret organizations, all of these things. Crying, are they correct? So I'm going to give you a litmus test and ask you to decide what are you seeing today that I told you about over a decade ago? 
when I said there'll come a day when everyone talks to everyone and there can be no secrets. You're starting to see the fact that there can be no secrets. They're being leaked openly all the time. So do you think that there can be someone with a group of people that would involve thousands of human beings all winking at each other saying be sure not to tell them about you know what <laughs> and have it last for decades even on their deathbeds they're not telling anything no secrets are coming out the only thing you're hearing is other human beings telling you it's happening giving you their testimonies of what they've seen and what they've heard I want to tell you in it doesn't work that way, not today. People cannot keep a secret. When everyone talks to everyone, you cannot have these kinds of conspiracies. That's the litmus test. If it's real, you'll know it. And you're going to know it soon. And yes, there are some conspiracies, and you're going to know it, and you're going to know it soon. Because in this day of what you have in global communications, all together, personally, socially, media no one can keep these kinds of secrets especially if it takes a lot of people to pull them off you see what I'm saying so start getting smart don't believe everything you hear and understand that these things even though sometimes they may seem like they've been happening because you got a lot of evidence the true evidence is is anyone coming forward are there any leaks? If any of them ever even talk to each other, somebody's recording it somewhere, somehow. Where is that? I think you see what I'm saying. It's time to use spiritual logic instead of fear. Some people are very attracted to this. They spin in the drama. They love it. You know who they are. Fifth question and the last one. Dear Cryon, if the new age is accurate and true, and if these truths are so powerful as you say, why are so few involved? If it's a good thing, then a lot of people would see it. You know why? Because it, it goes against your reality. Let me take you back a few years in medicine. There was an idea put forward that on your hands, they're what I would call creepy crawlers. <laughs> that came out of my partner's mind. <laughs> and you couldn't see them. And they carried disease. And so it was put forward that you ought to sterilize everything you could to keep the creepy crawlers from getting into other people when you touch them, when you operate on them. And it was funny. And they laughed and they laughed. Imagine such an idea. Yeah. The operative word is germs. And then they found them. <laughs> And there are. You can't see them. And they're all over your body. They're in your hair. They're in your skin. And then they realized what sterilization could do and why some of the things were taking place. It was not intuitive. It actually was very difficult <laughs> to show it and then they believed. And where am I going with this? It takes a consciousness of believing something that does not occur intuitively. In fact, it goes against the grain of what you think is real, laughable, creepy crawlers on your hands that carry disease. Who would think that? And the microscopes got better, and there they were. The human being is born into a reality that says they are nothing. They're small, God is big. The reality and the paradigm of an old energy says you worship something bigger. 
And if you look around the planet, that is the reality of almost all spiritual belief. You prostrate yourself in front of God, you kneel, you cry, you suffer, you climb steps, you do penance, you're not worthy. That is the energy of humanity. And you wonder why they're not attracted to something that says God is inside and you're beautiful and magnificent? That's why. It's like the creepy crawlers on the hand. Doesn't make sense. Laughable, stupid, silly, they say. Those of you in the room who call yourselves light workers and are holding energy for this planet and know about the love of God in your life, you're, you've been running against the grain for a long time. Because the paradigm is not with you, and it hasn't been with you, and it is changing. Yes, this belief system is different, for it has no structure. And there are no buildings to report to, and there's nothing to belong to, and there's no tithing, and there's no programs. There's no hospitals, there's no schools. It is simply a belief system that is personal, true, and it says God is in you. You are magnificent, and you can change the planet. Actually, your life will change everything for the next generation. It's slow, because what you do, every puzzle you solve, every puzzle you solve stays here and changes the vibration of the planet. If you're still wallowing in the old puzzle, you haven't solved anything, I'll tell you when you leave, your record will say, didn't change anything. <laughs> and you'll come back and try it again. Now some people call that karma. Are you ready for that or would you like to shift it now? If you're sitting here, you're shifting it now. That's why people don't see it like you do. They don't see the beauty and the magnificence. They're blind to the idea that you're as big as the Creator. That there may be a system which makes God bigger than anyone has ever taught you. And that is why I am sitting here at your feet. That is why this entourage is in this room holding your hands because we know what you've done. We know where this is going, the potentials are grand, and it's not going to happen overnight. And there may be some wars. And there may be sorrow coming. And yes, there could be additional tsunamis and all manner of things as part of the recalibration of a planet that is going through the pains of ascension. And it's what I told you 23 years ago and what I stick to to this day. There come a time when my partner is gone, you can still hear these words, you can still read these words, and he'll be back doing it again. He knows where he's going, because I've told him. One step closer to a healed planet, one step closer to a peaceful planet, it's going to take two generations before you really notice it. But when you do, the planet will actually have Planetary Peace Day, where they will realize what they've done and celebrate a change of consciousness, and there'll even be a flag for it. It's the beginning. Oh, they all went through it. Is there life on other planets? <laughs> they all went through it. The ones that didn't make it, didn't make it. The ones that did are the seeds in your DNA. Blessed is the human being who starts to understand and recognize the impossible. Things that don't make sense to you in an old paradigm as the beauty of the love of God. Hmm. Now go and do something with this. Live differently because of it. You're the only ones who can. Old soul. Hmm. And so it is.